Welcome to episode 18, virtually, because Joe is not here in Virginia. What if you were the one that's not here? You didn't have to at me like that. Oh, I'm going to, every time <laughs> I can throw you on Every the bus, time. Man. You've been gone though. I have. It is. Tell the people what you've been up to. So I had meetings in Orlando on Wednesday. So I flew in Tuesday night, had meetings all day Wednesday, and then flew from Orlando Wednesday night to Myrtle and did a little golf trip from Ooh. Wednesday night till Sunday. Did you play any golf in Orlando too? Uh, no, no. We okay. had meetings for like 12 hours. How'd they so go? Was, no. Went really well. Nice. So kind of, we'll see him out with a private equity firm and, and we'll see how, uh, you know, the next couple weeks go. But, um, listen to this, man. This is what I want to tell you. This is insane. Tell me. So I fly into Orlando Tuesday night, right? And I fly, of course, the flight gets delayed a couple hours. And so I don't fly in till 12 midnight. So I don't get to the hotel. It's like 1230 Tuesday night. And then I had to be up at six the next day. So quick turnaround, then had meetings all day and then got to the airport. I was tired. I was like, okay, finally. And I had a connecting flight from Orlando to Atlanta, where you are, okay. and then from Atlanta to Myrtle. Those are like, that was my connector. All right. And so I get there and after I get through security, get everything done, I get a notification. Your flight's delayed two hours, which oh. means I'm going to now miss my connecting flight in Atlanta, which now means I'm not going to be able to go to the golf trip until the next afternoon, which means I missed 36 holes. Like I missed an entire first day of the golf trip. So I was so pissed off. Luckily, we found a frontier flight that went from Orlando to Atlanta. But by the time we found this flight, an hour went by because we were like having to get refunded by Delta and then had the, have the ticket reissued for the connecting flight. And I was on the phone with Delta. I know it's just this whole issue. But I get to the front desk. It's 56 minutes from the time my flight takes off. 56 minutes. I get to the front desk. They won't let me buy a ticket online because it's too close. And like, you have a golf bag, too. right? Or did someone else uh, bring that? No, someone else brought okay. that. So I just had to carry on. But... <laughs> The, the front desk lady literally goes, I can't sell you this ticket. And I'm like, what do you mean? You can't, like, I got to get to Atlanta, like now. She's like, I can't do it. You'll never make it. It's going to, it's taking off in 56 minutes. We don't do this. And I said, I tell you what, just give me a chance, right? Give me a chance. And if I miss it, it's on me, right? It's my fault if I miss it. Just give me a chance. She finally says Yes. So I buy a plane ticket, have no idea if I'm going to make this flight. It probably Zero costs like idea. five, 10 minutes there at least, right? Oh, dude, by this time, it was less than an hour for sure. And I had to get through security in Orlando and then go all the way across and then take the train to another terminal. <laughs> so I cut everyone in security. Every single person, there's like 20 people in security or so, maybe more like just in line to, you know, get, see your license and see your ticket. And then you're, you know, you're into the security line, whatever. So there's like 20, 25 people. I individually asked every single one of them, can I cut them? It was embarrassing. I was like, Hey, my <laughs> flight takes off in 20 minutes. I'll like, be taking the L. There's no way. Everyone, I could literally, you can see like everyone was like looking back and looking at me. And I just kept being like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, my flight takes off in 20. So cut through everyone in security, right? They let me, they were nice enough. And if they had an issue with the license, the person right before me, who was like oh, trying no. to get through, and it took 10 minutes, 10 minutes, like, one hey, person. Can you step aside? Can I cut you while you're up there? Yeah, dude, it took 10 minutes because they were like, I don't think they're from here. They might've been from like... An island or something. I don't think they were like, they had a United States license. Anyway, it took 10 minutes and I'm like, no chance. Like by this time, it's like 25 minutes until like the plane shuts. Right. And I'm like, there's just no chance. And so finally I get through security. Security is kind of slow. And then I start running and I am just running from after security to the train, train to another terminal and ran from the terminal all the way across to the gate 
and made it while they were boarding. We're about to Yo, board. We're talking like knees to chest kind of running. Dude, Head we're down, talking arms like back. that. I, I probably ran half a mile. <clears throat> and it's a pretty solid half mile time if you think about like my, my freaking my freaking carry on just slide beside me. Hey, good thing you hit that mile every day for like what? The first three months of the year? First 100 days. Yeah. Yeah. But dude, and get this, it's not over. Right? So I finally get on this plane. Okay? Two negatives. I don't have the reissue ticket from Delta. They haven't sent me the reissue ticket yet. And also, yep. it was kind of good. The flight got delayed 20 minutes, 25 minutes, which is perfect. But now, if, if it takes off in time, we're like an hour between flights. So we'll still make it, even though Atlanta's a big airport. I get on. No joke. Can't make this stuff up, dude. I get on. Everyone sits down. Okay? The pilot comes out. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, do not do. I'm like, oh no. The pilot goes, we're having mechanical issues. And I'm like, oh my gosh. They're like, this should take us a few minutes, hopefully like no longer than a few minutes. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna miss it. Luckily, it only took 15 minutes. So when we landed in Atlanta, I had 38 minutes from the time we touched down. We hadn't gotten off the plane. 38 minutes to find my Delta ticket on my phone somehow, some way. And to run across the entire Atlanta airport from Terminal D to Terminal B, which is, you know, Atlanta is a massive airport. So I am running, take the train. Did you run, run or take the train? Okay, take the train. And literally, dude, I'm telling you what. Uh, this one was so close. I made it. Three-fourths of the people had already boarded. And I made the connecting flight. Got to Myrtle at 1230. Look at that. And then you got 36 holes in? Yeah, 36 Probably holes shot, next day. What? average of a 110 each round something like that yeah yeah dude so anyway it was like 115 actually Should have oh been nice dude i didn't know you were that good yeah but anyway man it was whoo dude i had and to tell that story because it was like traumatizing it was like the whole time like i was the most stressed out you could possibly be for like three hours <laughs> i was like this just sucks for, for, i was gonna say for better or worse it's only for worse i am the type of person who just barely fills up my gas tank barely makes it to the line in time like when you're saying you made it through with three-fourths of the line board and i'm like oh dude you had plenty of time i thought you're gonna say there's like one person left in line no dude luckily we didn't cut it that close we kind of feel i mean <laughs> both times i was just freaking running and i'm the opposite as you like i i like to be there not super early but you know like get through security yeah. have like I mean, 45 minutes you know i would i would say it's objectively better to do it that way <laughs> as someone who doesn't yeah. Yes. So dude, anyway, how's, how's golf though then? Dude, golf was so fun. We played 36 holes, 27 holes, 36 holes. We played 99 holes in three days. Dang. So played pretty well. A few people played pretty well on the trip. Um, didn't have any crazy Did you play the best though? Yeah. Uh, just, yeah, yeah. I wanted you to brag a chance to be able to, well, yeah, not brag, thanks, thanks, to yeah. announce that to everyone. Yeah. So, <laughs> so kept in the seventies all rounds, which was good, which was the goal. Nice. And how uh, many different courses did you play? Yeah. Legends. So we played okay. Legends Golf Resort, which is like, dude, they have it down to such a T. They have three courses and they're Unintended. all different and they're all in great shape. And okay. so it's just, it's so fun to play and it's not that expensive. Cause we stay like on the legends, like property, like they owned one yeah. of the, like they had a bunch of condos, I guess around. And then we played one round at coastals course, I guess not their like actual course, but like the student course, okay. um, which was fun. That was a good time. That's cool. We played everything, man, from alternate shot to cam's choice to, um, individual to best ball. We played like five different Some wolf. Rounds. Uh, no, we actually played, it was called Stableford. Okay. Um, where it's like a point system individual wise. Right. Yeah. You know, you get like two points for a par, three points for a birdie, one point for a bogey, something like that. And whoever has the most points, you know, at the end, it's adjusted That's for fun. handicap. So everything we did pretty much was adjusted for handicap. Did you win Which, with it being adjusted to? Absolutely not. So I shot the best Ooh. round every single round. And I don't know if I won once. Mm, hate it for you. It's tough. The handicap's tough, man. It's a tough game. It is tough. Yeah. Do you, mm, I don't know if I like or don't like handicap. That's someone. Yeah, I mean, I, I like be... it to an I like it to an extent. Like, I think, like for, I mean, you got to adjust it some way for sure. But the problem is, like, if I'm a one handicap, right, and someone's a ten, mm -hmm. so that means they get ten shots, I get one, 
right? So if they shoot, they have a good round, say they shoot 79, right? And what's a good round for a 10 handicap? That means they technically shot a net three under. And it's I feel like it's a lot more realistic for them to shoot a 79 than it is for me to shoot a 68. You know? Also, the nature of being worse at golf, you're going to have a higher variability between games. Right. And so, like, you're going to be pretty consistent. And so, if I get 18 strokes on you, yeah, maybe I'll lose it's by 30 tough. strokes. But then, like, yeah. maybe I play pretty well. And then, you know what I mean? So, that'll be interesting. Well, the tough part is, like, it's not even the score. It's, like, when you're playing best ball and you're playing match play and someone gets, like, say, me and you were playing and then we both have partners. Like, I'm playing with a buddy, you're playing yeah. with a buddy. But you get 18 strokes or 20 strokes, whatever your handicap is, relative to par. And you par a hole, well, that's a net birdie because you pretty much stroke on every hole. And so it's tough to like tie those holes. <laughs> you know, like I have to birdie to tie, yeah. which becomes becomes kind of difficult. So that's anyway, true. those games are kind of tough sometimes. Dude, that's fair. That's fair. So we were at a Taylor Swift concert. Yep. Here's my story from the weekend. Last night, I this is the wildest spectacle I think I've ever seen. And I'm not talking about necessarily the show, just the experience around it. I've never seen so much pink and glitter in my life. Not even close. Like, never been to a concert that people dress up and plan the way that they do this. Nuts. It's also, have never been in a room with as many females. I'm pretty sure that there had to have been at least 65 to 68,000 Females. So what? Uh, they played at what the Mercedes Benz Stadium. Yeah, she did. So anyway, the show itself was incredible. It was like visually, the transitions, all the like visuals going on, insane. Sound wise, obviously it's in a big stadium, so it doesn't sound that good. But I mean, it was unreal. The level Dude. of detail and excellence, and just I of course love that. But the people watching was insane also <laughs> dude i'm telling you what there is I, I think one of the things people don't really take into consideration with mm -hmm. those types of events right like a taylor swift or justin bieber like just like a super super big celebrity well not only are they very good at what they do obviously their team is unbelievable and what they do from lighting oh, to dude. visuals to management to the whole like performance it's not, it's not like Taylor Swift goes, this is what we're doing and I'm controlling everything. Like she has a huge team that like, but it's also the best. Yeah. I mean, the, the way they used all the screens around like the stage, of course, it's one of those stages that's got LED panels. The stage can, I guess it's modular that can raise, lower, bring stuff out like pianos. It was, it was insane to watch. And obviously like, I appreciate that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, yeah. I was very glad we went, but it was it was an experience, my guy. It was, oh, I don't God. know if I was prepared for it. Okay, okay, here's here's a question. What was yeah. one thing that surprised you in a good way on the Taylor uh -huh. Swift concert and one thing that surprised you in a bad way or negative way? Bad way. Okay, so I've never been to a concert that was so much of like a performance or not, that's not a like a um like a show, if you will. Mm -hmm. Where like if you look at it, it's so choreographed and all the visuals and the transitions where it's like Broadway meets a concert meets uh -huh. all of these special effects. So I knew it was going to be more like that. But that was surprising just because I've never experienced that before. Like I've been to big concerts, but it's just someone standing up with a band and like cool stuff on the screen. Yeah. Uh, I think I liked that more than I was expecting, which was a surprise, if that makes sense. Gotcha. What, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the sound. Oh should have known this but what i did not like and still surprised me was the screams and how loud and how deafening the oh crowd screams like the were. fans and stuff yeah i felt like a 90 year old man because i had to like cover my ears a couple of times not during the music not during that but just the like eardrum shattering shattering screens that would happen at times it was nuts, mm. that is nuts. and it, it, whatever you're picturing in your mind as like a loud scream double the volume Make it go on twice as long. That's crazy. Yeah. Dude, so. that's, yeah, that, that's kind of a negative. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a bit. Yeah. So are you still in Atlanta? Yeah. 
Yeah, so we're in Atlanta until we're flying back tonight. So gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. just gonna knock out, which is great. Caitlin's aunt's here, and so um, getting to Stay see with them. Her. Just been yeah, and haven't seen them in a while, so that's been awesome. Yeah, that Atlanta airport. That was the first time I was there a couple of days ago. That is insane. Yeah, it's a crazy airport. I'm curious too, like how many people flew in for the shows because this was the third night they did it, and then for Delta, like Atlanta is so easy to travel into. Yeah. So. It's a hub, definitely. I think it's their biggest hub, right? Mm -hmm. That that's like the main Delta hub, and it's one of oh, it's one of the busiest airports. And I don't know what the qualifier is, right? I mean, I think it's one of the busiest in the world. Yeah, it was so funny too. Like, I fly into Atlanta, and then there's thousands of people still there, right? At like 11 p.m. on a Wednesday. Yeah. And I fly into Myrtle, and I'm, I'm telling you what, you could have you could have dropped like a needle, and you would have heard it from half a mile away. Like there was nobody. Yeah, there. you're looking for somewhere to get coffee, and you drive, walk around the whole airport, and then eventually there's like a vending machine. It's probably like all you can get in Myrtle. That's it. Yeah, everything was yeah. closed, and Atlanta, everything was bumping. Like not just yeah. open, but like that's prime time, dude. That's not crazy. Okay, well. People are probably like, when are you going to talk about anything besides yourselves? We, yeah, wanted, those we, were two we, good stories. we missed you guys. We wanted to connect with y'all. Yeah, uh, those, those were two good stories. Also, we've, the main thing is obviously the draft. We've got we to yeah. talk about that. But before, let's jump into a little bit of the NHL playoffs because you're, you know, as a diehard Bruin fan, you, Iceman, Scott, all equal level of Bruins fans, obviously, a little bit let down today. Because yeah. last night, today is Monday, last night, a certain team lost in Game 7 in overtime. And I'll, uh, I'll give you the floor. Dude, so that was, I, uh, I love the intro because that, <laughs> the game last night was the first hockey game I've ever watched through. <laughs> <laughs> like, that a was the first hockey game. Bruins fan. Like, I actually watched, like, I watched the first period, I watched the second period, I watched the third period, and then I watched overtime. And it was the first hot, like I said, the first hot game I've ever watched more than arguably 20 minutes of. And uh, first of all, very fun. Playoff hockey, 100%. And I, I, I say I'm a huge Bruins fan. I think they are my favorite team just because I have a couple mm-hmm. buddies. Until they lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, now I'm a big Florida Panthers guy. Mm-hmm. But uh, but no, I, I like cheering for – I just – I never – I didn't grow up ever watching NHL. So it kind of sucks we don't cheer for anyone or don't like – I don't know. So Dude. anyway – how uh, South Hill can't be that far from Raleigh, though. It's only an hour and a half. Yeah, hop on board with the grittiest team in the NHL, the Canes. I'm, I'm thinking about it, man. I don't. They're dude, gritty, my guy. We are an hour and twenty minutes from Raleigh, and we mm-hmm. never went to a Canes game. That's kind of wild. Actually, makes no sense. No, Way think. closer to Raleigh than Charlotte. Charlotte's like what? Probably yeah. two and a half for you. Three and a half. Three. Or, yeah, or three, three and a half. Yeah, from South Hill. Yeah, but anyway, um, moral of the story is what a great game. I mean, Florida Panthers went up 2-0, and I was like, all right, Bruins, probably going to lose here. Then they scored three straight, right? Yeah. And then I was like, all right, Bruins are probably going to win. And then in the third period, with 56 seconds left, the Panthers score. Yeah, so I was trying to follow during the concert, had my phone out, and I got like this look. During the Taylor Swift concert. We turned that off. Yeah. Uh, It was unbelievable. And the goal was kind of... I don't know. I, I guess a lot of NHL goals are kind of lucky, but it like deflected off somebody and then went to this guy's stick. He was on the left side of the like left side of the ice, and then he hit it, and then it deflected, and then deflected off the goalie again, and then went in. And I was like, "Oh!" Anyway, they scored with 56 seconds, and then they had a good goal to cap it off, like five or ten minutes in overtime. But I was devastated. Uh, I want to see my team go all the way through. And just the Bruins, like to win 65 games, they yeah. broke the win record in NHL history. And I think they broke the points record for NHL history. Well, and for- if you recall, when we were talking about it, I'm like, they might be one of those teams that are just dominating the regular season and then choking the playoffs. Or not even choke. It's just like you slip up once. They did. They did, man. And they were up 3-1 and lost three straight games, like in the series. That's crazy. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, so I, that was heartbreaking. And then I went straight to bed because I was exhausted. So I didn't watch the Kraken Avalanche, but Kraken and, winning against the Avalanche. I mean, we have yeah. two two upsets right there. Yeah. So we've got tomorrow, 
Uh, we'll see, or I guess tonight. Today? Um, I have no idea. Yep, tonight. Another uh, which game will be yesterday, seven. Which will be yesterday for people listening, but we've got yep. Rangers, Devils. Who you got? Just curious. Dude, I'm telling you what, and the only reason I say this is because I used to be a Devils goalie fan, so I'm going to say Devils. I forgot who their yeah. old goalie was, who was such a beast. Yeah. Um, what about Shanger? Is it Marty? I was going to say the Devils before, but like, if you're picking them, I'll take Rangers. Why not? Take the uh, underdog. <laughs> there, was, there was one, yeah. was it Martin? Some, Martin Brodeur. I knew it. Oh, he played Marty. the New Jersey Ooh. Devils. He was such a beast. But so tonight, when people are listening, not our tonight, their tonight, your new favorite team, the Florida Panthers, are going to be playing. Yep. Yeah. That's yes, cool. on Tuesday. Unless you want to hop on board with the Canes. Hmm. Maybe I'm going to be a Dallas Stars fan because I was a big, uh, what was his name when I was growing up? Mike Madano. Yeah. Yeah, you Mike just... Madano. Gosh, this is bringing back. Like memories of the past. I used to play NHL like as like a nine year old kid, you know, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and just score tons of goals. Well, I feel like we don't know enough about hockey to keep talking about hockey. So no, we don't. But I, I still am a Bruins fan. I will say that I still still am. I'm looking for a good rebuild this off season, um, and a good 2024. Got love that. Yeah. I'm now gonna toss this over to Iceman. Oh, uh, see what he has to say today. What's up, everybody? This week's unsung hero is Ben from Kid Caddy. And if you've never heard of Kid Caddy, get on the wagon. Sometimes uh, necessity is the mother of invention. I think that's how it goes. And this guy's figured it out. If you've ever been golfing with a kid, it is the most terrifying sports endeavor you can do. Yes, I would rather go skydiving than worry about my three-year-old in my backswing. Not only is my backswing that uncontrolled, but also my child could be right there and I really don't want to hit them. And so Ben has figured this out. He said, hey, how do you take kids golfing and make it a safe but fun experience? Step in the kid caddy. Dude has patented the perfect solution. It's an equipment that hooks onto the stroller so that while your kid is in the stroller, you have your clubs ready to select for you. A couple balls there because you're going to shank a couple. And in the end, he has taken this full-blown product and started marketing it all over the world. He's taking pre-orders, actually, starting yesterday. And this is the coolest part. He finally went to the PGA show this year, which is like the PGA version of Comic-Con. I doubt people dress up much. But at the same time, these guys present all the new products, and he got fourth out of 110 new products for Kid Caddy. For a caddy to take your kids golfing while on a stroller. Here's to you, Ben. You figured it out. You're this week's unsung hero. I can't tell if that was an ad or a story. Yeah, yeah. We're getting paid for that. <laughs> no, that's a cool product, though. <laughs> that is cool, though. I love that. What a, what a hero there. I feel like I feel as a, I'm obviously not a dad. You're obviously not a dad that I know of. Uh, <laughs> so I feel like at that level, it's got to be great. Yes. Having a, a product like this. You get to go play golf. So the, the clubs are out, on the stroller. Care. We're gonna have to look this thing up, but yeah, we'll we'll throw yeah. some. Is it actually no? Kid if company, oh. if you is it sweet? Yeah, I'm on their Instagram. Nice. All right, that's oh, sweet. Cool. Yeah, All it's right. like a stroller with clubs. Uh, that's a pretty cool product, though. So that's kind of a sexy product. Moving on, NBA tonight for there tonight. It's we've got the Heat Knicks game two, Lakers Warriors game two. Mm. Right now Miami's up one nothing, and it'll be game one for the Lakers Warriors. Who do you think is going to win that series? The Dude. Lakers Warriors. It's got to be the Warriors, right? I thought you were on the Lakers bandwagon, but it's got to be the Warriors. Like I, I kind of, I don't know. I just have this this freaking fetish for LeBron. But do you have one for Steph too? I like Steph, but no, not re not as much. Growing up watching LeBron, like in, in high school, though, it, it inspired me a lot. I used we used to play on on eight foot hoops. We had, at at my like old house in South Hill, we would lower the goal to eight feet, have like three on three, you know, basketball games, oh, yeah, and just dunk on kids. Hmm. I mean, just absolutely murk young young people. 
as and, you were a young person also? Mm-hmm. No, yeah. no, I, this was, I was 21 at the time. They were 14. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to save you there. I love this now. <laughs> no, nah, we were in high school. It's so like 15, 16, 17. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't know. I've always liked LeBron. So I am rooting for Lakers, but I just don't think there's any chance they beat the Warriors, but also it's LeBron. Yeah. And then tonight, or tonight, we've got the 76ers, Celtics, Suns, Nuggets. I I don't really know anything about these. <laughs> so. Yeah, the only thing I know about them is the 76ers are one of my favorite teams because they're Philadelphia. I got to pull mm, Philadelphia teams. Big Philly guy. So you know what? Let's just jump to football now. The draft. Okay. Let's... I, what did you think? Well, actually, let's just run through the first round picks. Okay. Uh, so we've got, for anyone who missed the draft, quick run through of everything. Number one overall, the Panthers take Bryce Young. Boom. Pick number two, Houston takes CJ Stroud. And then Houston trades from Arizona to get Will Anderson at pick number that three also. Nuts. That was nuts. Uh, Indy gets... Why did I call him India? I don't think I've ever said that. The Colts take Indy Anthony Richardson. Yeah, that's where I was going, but I was like, I've never said that for the Indianapolis Colts. But they get Anthony Richardson. Then Seattle trades from Denver to get Devin Win- Witherspoon, who's a cornerback, which is, I feel like, pretty high for a cornerback there. I kind of like yep. that, though. Then the Cardinals go from uh, get a trade that was the Rams through Detroit to get Paris Johnson. Then the yep. Raiders get Tyree Wilson. Falcons get Bijan Robinson at pick number eight. And then your Philadelphia Eagles, this was wild for me. Uh, so th- this was the Panthers originally picked that went to Chicago, then went to the Eagles. They yep. get Jalen Carter at nine, which is nuts. Then the Bears, I'm st- stop talking about trades now. I'll just go for the picks at this point. The Bears get Darnell Wright. The Titans get Peter, I don't even know how to say his name, Skoronsky, Skronsky, something like that. Then the Lions got Jameer Gibbs. The Packers got Lucas Van Ness at 13. I don't want to give too much away, but that one surprised me. Then the Steelers got Broderick Jones. The Jets got Will McDonald, the fourth. The Commanders got Emmanuel Forbes. Patriots get Christian Gonzalez. The Lions again get Jack Campbell. The Bucks got Kalijah Cansey. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, then Seattle got Jackson Smith and Jigba. The Chargers get Quentin Johnston. Ravens got Zay Flowers. Vikings got Jordan Addison, and then a few more picks, and we're done. If you're tired of listening to me read names, <laughs> New York Giants got Deontay Banks. Bills got Dalton, don't know how to say his last name. Cowboys got Mazzie Smith, Maisie Smith. Um, Jaguars got Anton Harrison. I'm going to stop at this point because all the interesting picks were in the first 15, 16, yeah. 20, really. So, yeah. initial thoughts on the draft. So I if scroll back down. Oh no, 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 okay. So a few things. One, Texans bold call going up to three. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, I think. I think so it's overall, they, it's a good trade. They gave up four picks for that, but I they believe. gave up a lot. I was about to say they gave up a I, lot. I don't like that personally. So, I mean, Will Anderson is a beast, though. I, but, so, you can factor it however you want. Like, did they do that trade for Will Anderson or CJ Stroud? Obviously, it's kind of like in tandem because they're getting both of those. The net of both of them is not worth that. I think Will Anderson is good. Right. I think maybe even great. I don't know if he's as good as, like, a Miles Garrett or someone like that. And even if he was, not sure if that would be worth it. The fact that they did that for CJ Stroud too, I don't think CJ Stroud's going to pay out, and so that's just a lot to give up. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like they're just ever since everything with Sean Watson, they're just like scrambling to get something. Yeah, to yeah, it's like everything's on fire for yeah. them. But I, I don't know. I mean, it was a move. They made moves. Yeah, I just really, sh- I just struggle a lot with these QBs because we even analysts can sit here and talk, but like. At the end of the day, a lot of it's about the scheme, the coach, the resiliency, like the ability to get through failure. There's a lot of mental blocks, I feel like, of being an NFL QB. And so a lot of intangibles. So it's it's like we were just throwing like Bryce Young, CJ Stroud. Hopefully Bryce, I mean, I'm a Panthers fan. Hopefully Bryce Young works out, even though there's only been two Pro Bowl, I think it was one or two Pro Bowl quarterbacks ever that were under six foot. 
which I know heights not everything, but I mean, if you look at the track record. But also look at like Drew Brees. He's more than just like a pro ball quarterback. He is, but he's, he was six and a half or six foot and a half was like was his quote unquote listed. I think so, that him and Bryce Young are about the same height. I could be wrong, but I think they are. Yeah. And like I said, you just have to devise a scheme specifically for that quarterback, mm-hmm. right? Like you have to. So anyway, but he's very athletic. And all in all, like mentally, he seems to be like score the so highest. So what do you think about that as the first overall pick? What would you have done? I don't think I would have done anything defenders. different. I just don't love any of them. Like there's no like, right? Like I, I think the highest ceiling by far is Anthony Richardson, but also he's shown like the least amount of anything <laughs> in a college football setting. Yeah, which is why I don't necessarily love trade the trade up to number one this year. I do actually think that Bryce Young is going to be good. I hope so. I, th- I think he is. Of them, if if the Panthers had drafted anyone else, that would have been a total mess in my mind. Yeah, you know, I mean, you never, it's once again so much to, it, it, like his hat like. So let me try that one more time. So much has to do with the scheme and the offense and like the personnel, with coaching and players around. Like, who knows, man? Maybe the Texans will build some over there, and CJ Stroud will be a beast. Maybe the Panthers. Maybe Nico Ryan, yeah. Yeah, maybe the Panthers just can't figure it out coach wise with a new head coach, uh, a lot of new actually coaches on both sides of the ball, and you know maybe they'll figure it out. Maybe they won't. But it's just it. I, I agree. I just don't like giving up all the picks for this number one. You know, it's it's tough. It's tough for anybody. I feel like to be the face of a franchise with no. Let me rephrase that. With not much help around them, like it's not like he's going into someone who has like loads of talent, you know, and offensive weapons and a great offensive line. But yep. and again, I mean, Joe Burrow went into nothing. And, you know, and is a stud QB. So anyway, that's a long way to say we'll see. Well, well yeah. I mean, that is the nature of the game, though. It doesn't matter if he's six three with everything else; it's still a we'll right. see. 100%. So you bring up Anthony Richardson. What do you think about the Colts getting him at four? I just, it's a huge reach. It's one of those like eighty twenty things. Like eighty percent, I feel like it's going to be a stupid pick. Like 80% of the time, this is a dumb pick, Anthony Richardson at four. But that 20%, he could be Cam Newton-esque, right? Win an NFL MVP and and win a Super Bowl or two, and it's a phenomenal it, pick. So I disagree in the sense that if it was number one overall pick, I agree. Pick four, obviously still high. You're bringing in some of the, the Eagles offense. Look what they've done uh, with Jalen. Like, I think that it could pay off, but you're also, yes, this is where it is the risk. But like, if it does pay off, you're going like Anthony Richardson ceilings nuts. Yeah. The flip side of it is from pick four right now. You're coming in, you're going to have a good running offense. You have him and Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. They're going to be able to get productive. So maybe he's not the franchise quarterback in a few years, but they're going to get some production in the first couple of years. And so this is why I don't think it's that big of a risk. It's, it's like, you're, you're giving you the opportunity to have, a Cam Newton that maybe you can protect better than the Panthers did, keep them for longer, MVP caliber, all of these things. That's right. great. But if it if it's not, he's probably still going to put up a thousand yards. And I mean, who else? Lamar Jackson, Michael Vick. Um, who am I missing here? That's done like a thousand yards. Uh, Justin Fields. Did Mario or, ever do it? I don't think he did. He might have. But I mean, still, we're talking a handful of quarterbacks that have had thousand yard seasons. Baker and I Mayfield, think that Anthony Richardson, <laughs> Baker, killer on the his legs are just unreal. But that, like, <laughs> you're getting an Anthony Richardson who's going to be able to come in and do that at least. And so at pick four, the cost you're giving up isn't isn't that bad. Whereas the Panthers, if they had traded and done that, that would have been nuts. Yes, but, dude. The Panthers would. Uh, well, I don't know. Whatever. But they, and then like, what I'm saying overall, with like pieces overall, of the Eagles I, coming in. They'll, I think they'll be able to structure it well for him because, again, yeah. look at what they did with Jalen Hurts. So, oh, well, well, all in all, I mean, I like the Panthers. I mean, I, I don't hate the pick. I just really hope it works out. But there's two things I want to cover real quick, real quick about the draft. I have to say something about my Philadelphia Eagles, who I thought did very well with picking two Georgia defensive in, or defensive uh, line players in the first round. Jalen Carter, who obviously has some off-field trouble. But a consensus number one talent player in the draft, 
right? Yep. So, and first of all, I loved it too because it's like, what better fit is Jalen Carter than the Philadelphia Eagles? That fan base doesn't care at all. And I cannot believe that he fell. I mean, it's because of the accident and everything, but yeah. I cannot believe that he fell to nine. Yeah, the I Eagles had to be like, their their personnel had to be like, are you, ki- are you kidding me? Yeah, I mean, that's a perfect up, Eagles player. You move, you move up one pick to get him, and he's probably, in my opinion, the best player in the draft. Yeah. Yeah. Like, good job there. And then you get I mean, Nolan seriously. Smith as an edge. So I was fired up. You had to be fired up for the Eagles. Then they got Nolan Smith. Um, yeah. Who was so also the, solid. The rich keep getting richer with the, the Eagles defense. Dude. It's kind of like. Or you they guys. picked. I think it was five defensive players this draft. Mm-hmm. So I'm telling you what, man. They had a phenomenal pass defense. And the only thing was obviously their rush defense, quote unquote, wasn't like a top five rush defense. But it'll be interesting to see now. You added some some big pieces there for that. Yeah. Oh, and the other the second piece was Will Levis, of course, dropping out of yeah. the first round. I don't know. Maybe like th- there's a reason for that. Mm-hmm. Like it's not there's not just they're not just pick like not picking Will Levis because he doesn't look up, like. He doesn't look okay. There's a reason, like some something said, like in the combine or something said, and like the pro day or something said, like in the interviews, like hey, I don't know if this is the guy. So well, there's also people conflate, uh, even us as we're talking about it, like what GMs are looking for, what they've done, their studies versus what media is hyping. Like just because that's true, every person's putting as like the big four. Will Levis is could be a number one overall pick. Doesn't mean that GMs maybe even were ever thinking about him in that same like category. And so I think yeah. that piece is interesting to think about. I mean, I personally, he's got again great building blocks, but it, take him versus an Anthony Richardson. He was a little bit more productive in college than Anthony Richardson, but a lot of that's going off the 2021 season, not the 2022 season. He's right. got good size, so does Anthony Richardson. Uh, he's got a good arm, but he doesn't have that much touch either, so you're comparing those two, and then he's worse on the ground. And so you take some of these stuff, and then, like you're saying, who knows what happens in, in the interviews or when he comes and visits facilities or the other stuff that they know that we just don't know. So I, I was Correct. a little surprised that he slid past the whole first round, Right. But I w- thought he was going to be a higher pick, and then he ends up at the Titans, right? And so yep. that, I think, is a great fit. And it's a, I think it's a good fit as well. Also, this could be the best thing to ever happen to his career. I heard oh, this yeah. the other day when it was like, if you have someone like that who is arguably not ready to uh, – not ready, I don't know if that's the right word, but you know, to be a top five pick in an NFL draft and the pressure that like, comes – comes with that like someone said i forgot who said it exactly but they were like if you're a number three pick in the nfl draft and you don't perform well you're a bust yeah but if you're a number 33 in the nfl draft you don't perform well like it's it's not a crazy deal like if you're a number three pick and so Mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of the pressure is now off of him as well he doesn't have to quote unquote like carry that heavy lift and that heavy burden of being a bust potentially or being a top five NFL draft pick and all these expectations, especially around QBs. And so anyway, I think it could be the best thing to happen to his career and give him a little chip on his shoulder. I think so too. And then uh, the Dolphins later on draft uh, draft, uh, Devin A-Chain, as I said earlier this week. So now they're even faster. I don't know if you saw the TikTok I made, but if... I did. Yeah. Like, I think that a Dolphins 4x100 relay could make the Olympic trials. I'm telling you what, they have one mindset and it's like draft the fastest people possible <laughs> Dude, they have a 429 a 432 and two four three sevens, and then jalen ramsey's an alternate they also draft uh cam smith from south carolina it's a great corner so like i think the dolphins are gonna be in pretty good shape but It'll be interesting to see tua this year. yeah it will be see, interesting to see like how he's back uh obviously concussions you don't really want to mess around too much no. with that does that affect his play any but nay so let's do I guess who we think the draft winner is or not one or just one of the like wins yeah. teams wise, one of the losers and then a surprise. And that could be team trade pick, whatever uh, you want to get first on all three of those. Sure. So I will say to kind of piggyback. I think the Philadelphia Eagles did very well 
I don't know if they won the draft, but I mean, adding those key defensive pieces to an already really solid defense, um, I think boded really well for them. But also, there's there's a lot of talk about the Steelers having a great draft too. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I would say that. And then for the, I mean, definitely the most surprising for me was the Houston trade to three. Uh, I don't think anyone really saw that coming. And then what's the third one? The like, wait, you did the most surprised, so then the worst. Oh, the worst. Hmm. Oh, I know. I know 100% what it is. What? My kicker getting drafted pick 99. (laughs) That, like, remember who's that kicker a couple years ago who got drafted in like the second or third round? Crazy. And then he sucked. He was a Bucks guy, right? Wasn't he a Bucks kicker? Was it Akuna, maybe? What was his name? I'm not sure. Hold on. Um, Because Ryan Suckup was a Mr. Irrelevant kicker for the, I guess, I think it was the Bucks that drafted him. Robert Acuio? So feeding off of that, though, my worst, there's there's, uh, some bad ones. I I don't love a lot of what, like, the Commanders did. The, The Cardinals, I don't think, did that well. Jets, but the Patriots drafting a punter and a kicker. Yeah, I, I just don't like that. Sorry, Ice Man. I I know that you have the love in your heart for the kickers. I, they are very important, but drafting two of them in one draft, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, that that's a good piggyback. Like, yeah, definitely kickers. Because I mean, were you talking teams. about were you talking about the Forty ers kicker uh, that they drafted? Because that was like third round. Yeah. No, his name's Roberto. Oh no, no, no! I'm talking about this year. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. nine nine pick overall. So those were interesting. I also the Lucas Van Ness going to the Packers as a fit that makes sense Midwestern for the Packers. But what was he twelfth overall? That uh, yeah, something like that. Uh, thirteenth overall. I don't. I don't know. We don't. We don't have to go there. My. I hate agreeing with you. I was going to do the Eagles, though. I can't believe they got Jalen Carter at nine, then getting Nolan Smith at the end of the draft. They, they've got two more years, I think, with Hassan Reddick, at least. I mean... I, I'm telling you what, man. I like Eagles, that. once again, should be very... I mean, didn't, Hertz just got signed to a $400 billion contract, as did Lamar Jackson. I think Lamar Jackson is the highest so, paid now. So that's the other one, because Zay... Yeah, he is, I believe, just past that. And then they, Odell Beckham, obviously, we talked about that. Then they drafted Zay Flowers, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, they're definitely building around him, which I think that'll be interesting. Then my biggest surprise, I, I, I don't want to agree with you, but the Texans taking pick two and three were very interesting. Will mm-hmm. Levis slipping through is very interesting. No, nope. um, I kind of think though that Jalen Carter is slipped. Actually, no, Bijan Robinson going to the Falcons. Oh pick eight. yeah, that was back. what's interesting. The running backs were getting drafted high this year, which I like, but it's very shocking in our analytic age. It makes yeah. Me feel what like are they like? Well, what, like, are they just going to rely on on the running back to be like the centerpiece? I mean, yeah. they have so they, many questions in so many different areas. Yeah, and then they get Taylor Heineke, which feels like a very lateral move from Marcus Mariota. They, they got a like good running back quarterback. last year who's getting like, I think it was like getting like four plus, 4.9 something yards a carry, and he was a late mid or mid round pick last year. So that's interesting. But yeah. moving on, we are doing the Florida Man a little bit different. So we're making it a competition. Yes. Instead of just me creating ones for you to pick, we're back to it's either one's true and one's false. But we're, uh, giving them to each other. It's a point system. If we trick the other person, we get a point. If they get it right, they get a point. Yeah. And then whoever's creating it, you, you keep creating it until you trick the person and then it switches, right? So yes. like if this one, if I get it right, you do it next week. And if you get it right, I do it next week. Yes. So you're like rewarded for getting it right. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I did a little Florida, man. I think you're going to like mm. these two, man. All right. Story one, Jason Bourne. According to a news report, a man was taken into custody in Tampa after he created a disturbance at a library while under the influence of alcohol. The individual, who was causing a commotion, was asked to leave the premises by the staff. 
but he refused and claimed he was Jason Bourne. Upon arrival, the police were informed of the man's self-proclaimed identity, but they soon discovered that he was actually a 45-year-old man named Jonathan and not Jason Bourne. Saucer reported that Jonathan had provided the officers with a false social security number. As a result, Jonathan was arrested for resisting an officer without violence, which is considered a first-degree misdemeanor offense. Mr. Jason Bourne himself. Story number two, Tony Stark. A man was taken into custody by the police in downtown Orlando after he tried to break into a high-security government facility. The man, who appeared to be under the influence of drugs, claimed to be Tony Stark. According to the eyewitnesses, the man attempted to enter the facility by using an explosive device. When security personnel stopped him, he became agitated and began shouting that he was Tony Stark and that they should let him in. The police were called to the scene, and the man was eventually subdued and arrested. He later revealed his real identity to be Jonathan, a 28-year-old who had a history of substance abuse. It was reported that he had been watching the Iron Man movies before his failed break-in attempt. John has been charged with attempted burglary, possession of an explosive device, and resisting arrest. He is currently being held in custody awaiting trial. Mm, You did a good job on these. I I like the the parallels you did. But I think that story number two, Tony Stark, is true. Wrong. (laughs) Wrong. Story one, Jason Bourne. So I was torn. (laughs) Okay, go ahead. (laughs) My guy, uh, after reading the news thing, (laughs) he was like convinced that he was Jason Bourne. And then he came to the wrong social security number. The other one, uh, I asked asked ChatGPT to write the same story, but with a different version. So I was... uh, Torn between two things because I was trying to figure out the way that you've been doing this. And I was like, story number two feels more fleshed out. So naturally, it's like, okay, is that an article or did he go there? But the real reason I decided is because you've never watched the Iron Man movies. And I think there's something about like breaking in with explosives or whatever, or like it feels like kind of on story. And I'm like, he either got chat GBT or someone to to help with that because he wouldn't have known that. Well, so that was my was guess, but that was, that was well written. Chat. GPT. Thank you. Boom. Thank you. So dang it, I have to do it again next week. And you're still up one nothing. My guy loves Florida. Let's just move to Florida. That'd be a dream. Let's go. Mm. All right. So well done. Uh, moving on nice. to growth mindsets. We've we've been skipping these a few weeks, so I don't even know what to update people on. Mm. Uh, so I guess we're starting fresh. Episode 18 is a clean slate. What you got for us? Dude. Episode 18, growth mindset for me. And this is the most important, I think, because at, there's so many different facets of life, but I'm really trying to get into a daily win, right? Like mm. just three, actually it's four, four things. And they're not big. They all probably take somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes each. So it's not like it's like huge ask out of like every day, but it's to have like four different things in different facets or aspects of my life. Um, yeah. to win the day. And oh, so just cool. kind of staying consistent with like a workout, Bible verse, and a couple of business things every day to kind of help move the needle on a revenue standpoint. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of my, my goal is just to make something that every day I can feel like I'm moving the needle in the right direction in multiple areas. Hmm. That's cool. Mine, as you were saying that right now, I was like, what should mine be? There's a lot of things I want, but I think that I need to get like work wise, especially get back to thinking four months out and figuring out how I can rein in the time, all of these different projects. And Mm -hmm. so taking some time when it's busy right now to plan to how to make it better in three months, instead of just reacting at the moment. And then three months later, it's the exact same. Fair enough. If that makes sense. And so taking the time right now is kind of my growth mindset. And then I don't know what that'll look like. Hopefully that'll lead to, some kind of way to make it better (laughs) strategy or plan. So, but draft what we're doing. We wanted to mix it up, make it just pointless because the normal pointless ones weren't pointless enough. So we actually, actually no, this one's probably the least pointless because it has practical applications because it's pizza topics and let's go ahead sauce. And we'll say mozzarella cheese. Those aren't toppings. Those are just like basics. Okay. So no one's taking those. Uh, outside of that, it's free range. 
I've got pick number one. Yep. And I could get destroyed for this pick online or loved for it. And at number one, I'm going to draft Pineapple. Shut it's, up. It is not even a strategic pick. It's just I, that's, I'm happy if I could just have Pineapple on my pizza. So I'm taking that. Number one overall is Pineapple. Bring on the Pineapple and Pizza haters. I want it. I feed off of that. For me, it's been my favorite pizza for a few years, and it's sausage. I mm. love good sausage and cheese. That's nice. All right, I'm going pepperoni, pick number yeah, two. Yeah, classic. Yeah. You went outside the box and then classic. Number two, I'm going to say the barbecue style pizza. Well, you have to pick a topping, though. It's not the whole style. Like chicken, barbecue chicken. Okay, barbecue chicken. Yeah, like just like they make chicken. like the barbecue sauce, but also they put chicken like on top. Yeah, I had one a couple months ago from uh, Blaze. That was. Mm. I feel like you might need a. I was going even more basic, like either like barbecue sauce or chicken as it, but we'll give you the barbecue chicken sauce or like. Okay. Um, jalapenos. Pick number three. Oh, nice, mm-hmm. nice. My number three, mushrooms. I'm becoming Ooh, a big good. mushroom person. I am too. I used to not like mushrooms till about a year or two years ago. Now I really like them now. I'm evolving. Them? I used to hate tomatoes, like tomatoes again. Still hate mayonnaise. Uh, Always will like hate mayonnaise. Style, yeah. Pick number four, bacon. Mm. How did I not think of that first? Mm. I'm running out. I'm running out of options here. Um, but I still have to stay on the meat train and I got to go ham Mm -hmm. because there's times where like a, a a meat lovers pizza is the right meat lover. Yeah. Yeah. I love meat. I'm going to go. So not in conjunction with these other toppings for the most part, Uh but basil, why not? I'm, I'm refined. No, I'm not refined. I take that pick back. Nope. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to double down on it. Basil. (laughs) I don't know why I did that, but I did that. Enough so, setting. my number five is kind of a, I guess, I don't know, that's not really a stretch, but you have to be in the mood for it, and it's breakfast pizza, and specifically having scrambled eggs on pizza. Nice. Scrambled eggs. I do, I love, do love good breakfast the, pizza. No free shout out to the Ucrops breakfast pizza? Yes. I actually had that for the first time last month, and it was... Fire. Fire. Fuego. Well... Thanks for talking to me virtually since since you know I left you and went to Atlanta to watch Taylor Swift and see all Dude. the glitter and shiny things and pink and sparkles and it was wild. Amazing. Wild. Everyone that has been on that show, even male, female, doesn't matter, they've all said it's been an amazing show. Oh yeah. I mean, it was there's was a number of times where I was just like enthralled by yeah. the visuals. What a good word happening. Yeah. I'm very, very smart. I know, man. You're very, intelligent. Very, very smart. You're intelligent. And on that note. If you want to keep hearing our smartness, like, subscribe, leave a review, share, care, whatever else. I don't even know what to say. I'm going to call my mom now. I'm I'm cutting myself off. (laughs) But yeah, share, like, subscribe, and uh, let us know what makes you laugh. Yeah. All right. Until next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.